Hello everybody. Uh, I'm getting ready to make a dish called uh, crawfish etouffee. That's all the tomatoes right there. I got set back that row, this row, this row, and that row. So I got quite a few. There's some carrots, some mushrooms. There's mushroom broth right there, but I got the mushrooms too. Carrots. Yeah. Some uh, they call that uh oyster mushrooms. I got that, but uh, but uh, yeah. So this was my last one from 2017, and uh, some of the potatoes that I jawed. Here's some old stuff. That's like uh, beef stew. That's some chicken I jawed. How long ago that was? 2016 I jawed that there's some bacon behind that that I jawed probably the same year got some stuff that's back there that's been jawed for a while there's a bunch of pears right there that's been jawed for over a year there's some deer meat venison from a seven point that's good stuff right there so this here is everything I'm gonna do for the crawfish etouffee uh, there's some crawfish I peeled um, this is crawfish from this year 3 2 20 that's from a crawfish ball we have I'm just kind of thawing it out you see when <coughs> you have a crawfish ball and you're always gonna have some left over got this uh, little flat of them left over I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just on the peel. So you peel and then you have crawfish tails, peel crawfish tails. So that's good stuff. And it's done now. Yeah, I had to dump the first batch, but. Getting closer. Just that much right there. <laughs> that pulled that pulled the uh thing out of there. Gotta get that line out. When you're cooking with them, some people worry about it, some don't. But when I'm going to go cook with them, don't worry about it. See, it came out with that. It pulled out with the tail if you pinch. So, you can pull it out. Now, shrimps, you can just pull it right there in the middle and it'll pull out. But, Crawfish are a little bit different. And that would be it right there. That's the end of them. And uh, this is the rest of the ingredients I'm going to need. Got onion, bell pepper, garlic, a little jalapeno pepper, celery. That's a green onion. That's like the smallest one I had, and that's about as big as it, I mean, I'm, you ain't going to get nothing like that in the store. This is just stuff I bought from the store, and then we grew it out here. Each one of them was about that big from the store. And then this is what grew from that with fertilization and everything. Anyway, I usually use button mushrooms, but we're going to do shiitake this time in it. Button shiitake, any kind of mushroom will work. There's your seasonings. Uh, cayenne pepper, garlic powder. Garlic, granulated garlic, uh, onion powder, onion, probably granulated, yeah, granulated onion, Louisiana hot, lamb parents, Worcestershire sauce, and about a half a cup of flour, and then some butter, and then the tomatoes. And that'll be about it. Uh, this will make a real fine crawfish etouffee. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop some seasonings, and then uh, we'll put it all together, show you the process. I think that should be enough garlic. It's a little light on the onions, but I don't feel like cutting into another one. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is just 
chop this one up. And that would be the last of the onions that I grew in the garden this year. That's it. There will not be any more till next year for that I grew. Or bell pepper. I haven't gotten any bell peppers yet this year. Pull out a piece whenever I need a piece. That's the trinity there, onion, bell pepper, and celery. Now, additions, this is probably fall in the bell pepper category, but it's a little bit hotter, so. This comes from the garden. The jalapeno peppers are really coming on right now, so I have quite a few of them. I just like to let them get big because I like to make jalapeno pepper poppers and stuff. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jar a bunch of these. I'm going to see if I can, uh, I'm going to see if I can do uh, some fermenting this year maybe. I saw they got a fermenting kit on horse tools. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy that. I mean, you could probably get them anywhere, but I like to throw those guys the bone because they're good guys and I'd like to give good people my business because uh they sure give us a lot by doing all those videos about gardening and how to do things i mean i know it's advertisement for them but they are teaching us so it's all good i'm gonna cut that like that this is almost like an onion down here toward the Garlic, a little smash like that, a little smash like that, a little smash like that, and a little smash like that. And what will happen is the peel will just pop off of them if you give them the right smash. I like to fine cut mince my garlic in a very fine choppings. Get all of that flavor in there. Garlic gives a great flavor to any dish. I know they say you're not supposed to overcooked garlic but this is not this is a seasoning this is not uh, the this is different you could probably add some later in the dish and it'd be fine but this is for sauteed seasonings and sauteed seasonings are cooked all the way So, 
we're going to do is uh, some of this is going to go in in the beginning, but you leave a little bit of this out and put it in later, and it gives a little color to the dish. So you could do that with parsley too. Parsley could definitely be in this uh, in this uh, recipe. This is just some of the tomatoes from the garden. Ooh, smells good. Okay, I want to get that into the sauteed seasonings because that's going to also go in later. You know, you can, you don't have to really cut this down too much. These are just some little bitty knots heads that I had sitting over there, I don't know, I'm just going to be able to get cooked down into it, I don't know what the heck that is, got a little cherry tomato or something, See, I put the canned tomatoes in there, and that's fine enough. But I'd like to put some fresh ones every now and then. Hmm. Ça c'est bon. All right. What I'm gonna do is I my one of my last videos. I told y'all how I saved these lids. I'm gonna try and save this one, of course. Sometimes I'm strong enough to get in there and pop it. Let's see. Ah, woo! <laughs> that took a. It, you got to have strong fingernails, otherwise you got to use that can opener and flip it around. But that that can top, that jaw top is gonna be just fine. I'm gonna wash it. The rubber around it looks really fine it's not distorted so that's gonna be a fine top to use again ain't nothing wrong with it i don't know why people don't reuse them but that's that's your pro that's your prerogative so i got oh that smells so good that smells as sweet as the day that i put them in there i could drink that i could literally drink this down and be happy um that'd be one heck of a bloody mary you know <laughs> it smells so good y'all just that that's what gives this that's what gives this crawfish etouffee it's great flavor is fresh jawed tomatoes out of your own garden oh that, boy, that smell smells so good it's so it's incredible it's intoxicating smell so what I'm gonna do, a stick of butter. I heated this pan up, I hope it's cooling down a little bit. I had some cooking oil in here. The other day we fried fish and hush puppies. I had to clean it out. One of the ways you, you gotta clean it out is get it real hot. I think that's okay. And what you wanna do, yeah, it cooled down a lot. The butter, butter's not you know like sizzling it just melting so you go ahead and melt your butter down this is another way to make a roux y'all saw me make a gumbo y'all saw me make a a, a sauce pecan both of those, one of them has a real dark chocolate roux. One of them has a chocolate roux. This is a butter roux, and it's going to be a blonde roux. And I make it a little bit different in that the other roux, I would take the oil and put it in here. So the butter's the oil, and I'd use cooking oil on other ones, but this one I use butter. And the other one... I would put the flour in and brown it by turning it the whole time. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna saute seasonings first. 
I'm going to put this back on the hot side and get this back a little warm, about medium, in the medium range, because this is this is the dual burner thing, so this is the inside outside burner. So that's medium, that's the level simmer, that's high. And this is for the other side. The, the, just. So we got that butter nice and, nice and melted. Let it get a little hotter, a little warmer. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a little plate to put the the spoon on. Yeah, it's, it's getting warm fast. It's getting hot fast. Mm. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the seasoning in. The chopped seasonings. Onion, bell pepper, celery, garlic, jalapeno pepper, a little chopped green onion, all going in there now. See? That's all going in there right now. Beautiful. The smells you're going to get from this. Man, if you don't cook like this, you are missing out on such a wonderful way to cook. This is truly a great way to cook. So all the chopped seasonings are in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stirring. Oh, the smell is already starting to permeate throughout the kitchen I can tell oh that that chopped seasoning man that is so good y'all so good Woo. man I was wondering if I had enough onion <clears throat> man I can smell that onion in there it smells so good that, that fresh grown, when you grow your own vegetables, there's a different flavor taste. It's so much stronger and potent. It really is. It's crazy how much stronger and flavorful things are when you grow them yourself. It's just wonderful. So I'm going to saute this down pretty good. A lot of uh, South Louisiana chefs will tell you, you saute until wilted or saute until clear or iridescent I guess that's the word they use but when they say the, the onions get clear when they they get clear or to me I never really really understood what they meant by that because they don't really get clear they just get sauteed to me. I mean, that's just the way you are. I mean, just the way, just the way I look at it. And I've never, never really had a problem cooking. It's just, I see it and I know it's, I know it's ready. Now, you can go a little bit farther past with sauteing or a little bit under sauteing. Like, if I put it in now, it'd still be alright. But, you don't want to do that right now. You want to let that flavor, this, these flavors mix and marry together and they're going to blend. If you put it in too early, it's not going to be terrible, but it ain't going to be right. And if you put it in too late, if you start browning these sautéed uh, seasonings, if you start seeing them brown, you're not, you're not going to, it's not going to be destroyed, but it's, that's a little too overdone. So you want it to be just wilted. Uh, strongly sautéed. That's what I would say. Strongly, strongly sautéed. I've gone. I've done had it to where the garlics start to get a little bit brown color to them, and I don't panic with that. The next thing you add is the flour. 
Oh man, the smells are getting, it's getting there, I can tell. Oh. Y'all, y'all need to be cooking like this, yeah. I mean, I know people say us, us people in the South can cook. I, I believe anybody can cook. I believe the Northerners can cook just as fine. They just, they don't cook with as much seasoning as we do, I don't believe. But I think that's becoming, I, I think that's going the way of the dodo. I think, I think people in the North are just as good cooks now. I see some people cooking recipes up North that just look fantastic. And people in other countries, I see channels from other countries make my mouth water with some of the stuff they cook that uh lady uh snacks and food i love her website uh her, her youtube channel i think it's called snacks and food snacks and fun snacks and food i'll put it i'll type in the name but uh she she really cooks some wonderful things just quick dishes and she makes her videos fun so Snacks and food. I think you have a wonderful channel. You are you you are just fun to watch. And uh, talking about another channel that doesn't you know this ain't a cooking channel. I just want to put them in there because they're just fun to watch. You can tell these two people love each other. That they love what they do, and it's so fun watching homesteaders. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, they, they're just farmers, uh, they, and they, they look like millennial farmers to me. They look a little younger than what I am, and, uh, they look like they just have so much fun making their videos and doing what they're doing, and it's so great to see people who, who, who are living the, living the dream, and that would be Old Redding Farm, and, uh, the guy's name is John, I, his wife's name's, uh, I, I I don't remember what his wife's name is, but I watch them. Their, their videos are just really, really nice, you know? It's fun to watch. Some people got it, and some people don't got it. I don't know. I, I guess I, I might not got it, because <laughs> I don't get many people watching my videos. So maybe I don't have it. Or I think one of my problems is I don't social network out on uh, all the other social networks. I don't Twitter. I don't Instagram. I don't just other Facebook. I don't do that. Um, I don't do any of those. So you know, and I always said it. I get caught up sometimes I wish I'd get more more views because it takes a lot to make these videos but really all in all I'm doing these videos for my own pleasure I can go back I watch my own videos over and over it's not narcissism it's not being in love with yourself I just like to go back and see what I did it's fun and maybe one day my daughter will watch these and actually have something to remember me by. Because, you know, that's... We don't take pictures like we used to. You don't, you can't go flip through the photo album and see what mom and dad did years ago. And we lost most of our pictures in floods and hurricanes. This right here, hopefully, you know, this will never be lost. All right. This is getting to the point where it's done. That's about wilted and translucent. I mean, you see, it's not translucent. It's kind of, it's getting clear. The onions are clearing. They're getting clear. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead a little bit more time. Oh, that smell. Yeah, it's, it's there. Oh, wait, I put it. Okay, right here. I'm gonna put the flour in there. That's a half a cup of flour. Yeah.
It don't look like much, does it? It don't look like much, but it boy, it's jam-packed with seasoning and flavor in there. And now, that flour is a thickening agent, but it's also the the flour starts cooking, and it gives another, it imparts another flavor into the dish. So you, you have to do this like this. Now, one thing I can tell you, if you didn't have butter, you can use another oil and do this. You can use a olive oil, you could use a canola oil, you could use a vegetable oil. It's gonna have a different flavor, of course, but it's gonna be good. It will be good. Butter just seems to work for this recipe. <clears throat> Ooh, that smells good, y'all. Crawfish etouffee. These uh, Cajun French recipes, they are handed down from grandparents to parents to, you know, children. But you okay to put your own spin on things. You can add or subtract ingredients. You just learn which ones to add and subtract in the right way. And uh, there's just certain ones you don't take out, but there's, oh, there's things you can add. Like, most people who make crawfish etouffee would be like, what the heck are you thinking adding mushrooms? I love mushrooms. I love the flavor of mushrooms. I love the texture of mushrooms. They don't impart a strong flavor on too many things. And it just tastes right and feels right. And this is my wife's favorite dish. And I've cooked it this way. And she always goes crazy over it so happy wife happy life you know happy husband who cares <laughs> uh, I got a great wife I got a great family my family is wonderful y'all I couldn't ask for better I really couldn't everybody starts off rough but man, where we ended up, I tell you, God blessed us all. But he made us work for it, I can tell you that. It's not free. It's like they say, freedom isn't free. Blessings in your life ain't free. You earn them. Woo! Man, smelling good, y'all. I'd say that's getting to be a blind color, huh? You don't let this sit too long, though. Woo! That's looking good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. About the right color, huh? Getting close. Let's say blonde is achieved. You can go a little bit, a little bit darker, maybe. I believe how important this part is right here because everything's getting real thin. There ain't much for boy. Keep it moving. Mm. 
Okay. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and dump that in there. Ooh, that's the good stuff. Oh my gosh, you smell them tomatoes. I do. Wow. That's that pretty color. Mm-hmm. The one thing I like to do right here. Mm. I get that water ready. Now you could have seafood stock or any kind of stock but it's water works just fine right here this is another part where you just you keep stirring that's sticky you scrape that how beautiful that is the smell is just Mm. This is why I, I like to jaw so many tomatoes because, man, this stuff is so good. Now, another thing I said I'm doing crawfish etouffee, you could do shrimp etouffee. You can just go buy some shrimp from the store. And these are crawfish we boiled, so it's got a good boiled crawfish flavor. There's a lot of seasonings in the crawfish already. But uh, you can pull boil the shrimp if you want and some crawfish boil and kind of make them uh, crawfish boil style or shrimp boil style. Or you can just add regular shrimp and just add your seasonings to this. If, I, if you do that, I would not hesitate to uh, use a little bit of Let's see if I got something. I got a little bit. This uh, Zatarain's crab boil. You just, and I'm talking about, you just use drops. You don't use much. You use like maybe about two or three mils of that or less. And uh, huh. It'll, it'll give that boiled seafood flavor to it. And then you don't have to really boil your seafood. You'll get that flavor in there. I could add a little bit of that to this right here, but I don't need to. I know that from the past. Scrape that stuff off of that. I swear the good flavors are gonna come from scraping. There you go. Mm-hmm. You better have some tough, tough forms and some strong fingers. This will work you out. Smells are good. Uh -huh. All 
right, the next phase is about to happen, y'all. I'm about to go ahead and pour that water in there and loosen it up. Now that I got it about as thick as I can get it, I'm gonna go ahead and pour this uh, paint jar of water in there and then go ahead and Break it up, kind of get the rest of the scrape off the bottom. <clears throat> All that's gonna spread out into there. Look at that. Nice, huh? Now don't worry, it's gonna look loose right now. I'm gonna, it's gonna thicken up. It's gonna thicken up real good. Don't worry, don't you worry about that. Take this down and get it thicker. Okay, so I got the crawfish here. Yeah, they mostly thawed out, and that's what crawfish look like when they cleaned and uh, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Wow. What? That tastes good just like that. Mm hmm. When you do them from a crawfish bowl, they already have so much flavor. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and add. I got to do, do this carefully. I'm going to go ahead and add the fresh tomatoes. fresh tomatoes and I'm gonna go ahead and stir them in the pot okay see it gives a little bit different consistency see that looks watery but it's gonna thicken up here y'all cuz I ain't finished adding stuff yet so, it's starting to get that orange reddish consistency that's that's the, this is exactly the color you want your A2 fade look. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. See those bits of tomatoes in there? Nice. So. Yeah, y'all. This is good. In Francais. En Francais, s'il vous plaît, c'est bon. Ça, c'est bon. Ok. Ooh, man. That's sticking enough. Man. Mm. Bring that smell. Mm. Y'all smell that? Is that getting through the, is that getting through, oh man, this smells so good. Very tomatoey, very, already the seasonings are just powering through on that smell. That's just, this right here would be incredible to just eat over some rice. And we're going to eat this over rice. And uh, it is just, oh, so powerful. But wait till those crawfish and those other seasonings go in. Oh, 
It just gets better and better and better. So, this is right here at this point. You can put the crawfish or you can put the mushrooms in. I'm going to put the mushrooms in because the crawfish are already cooked. They don't really need much cook time. But shiitake mushrooms need a little bit more cooked down than uh, a, a bud mushroom. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in there and let them saute down. And they're going to soak up flavor. And it's just a good consistency. So let them cook down. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This is good stuff. This is what living is all about, man. It don't get any better than cooking good food. My daughter's going to be staying at my uh, in-laws tonight and tomorrow night. So my wife is coming home. My daughter doesn't really care for this dish so much. She likes the sauce pecan. So uh, this is Tuesday, June 30th. Last day of June. And... My mom and dad were supposed to come over today to give my daughter a birthday present. But since she's not here, I was going to cook this all for us. But since she's not here, we're not going to, we, we're just going to be me and my wife eating this. But Thursday, my daughter's favorite meal is that venison or deer sauce pecan. So I'm going to cook that for everybody. And woo, man. On a scale of 1 to 10, this would be at least a 40. That sauce pecan is a 41. I don't know. This is a 40. This is a 100 one day, and that's a 100 the next. I don't know. This blows the scale out the whack, because this is the best food you ever ate in your life. I can promise you that. And I'm not saying that because I think I'm a good cook. Anybody could do this. You just... You put these combinations together and wow. See look at that. See how that's thickening up? You see that thickening? Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh me. This is gonna be nice. Yes. Praise God for something so good. He gives us so many good things. Oh yeah. The mushrooms are starting to really get the uh, the softening up now, so I'm gonna let that cook for a while. All right, I'm gonna let it cook for a while and saute down, and then I'm gonna put the uh, put the crawfish in, and then I'm gonna put the powdered seasonings, liquid seasonings in, and then a little bit of the green onion, and we're done, and, and rice. So. Talk to y'all later. Alright, that wasn't much time. This is starting to get real uh, thick. And it's kind of starting to get a little stick to the bottom. Not much. So I'm going to go ahead and back the heat down. So I put it on this two. Number two. And uh, I'm going to let that this saute and just run down a simmer. Just run. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that uh, crawfish, take this crawfish, and go ahead and put the crawfish in there. And that's what I'm going to do. We got some fat in there, all of that. Yeah, y'all. So now, still a little frozen. But that's okay. Oh, yeah. Nice, huh, y'all? Stuff here. Ooh, 
man, that's looking good, huh? Y'all see what that looks like? All right, everybody, I'm gonna start using uh, some of the powdered seasonings. This is the cayenne pepper. I'm gonna just put a little bit in there. You don't need to put too much. You, you don't wanna overwhelm it. That's enough. So I'm gonna put a little garlic powder. Now I'm going to put a little onion powder. I ain't got much left of this. I need to get that in there. Get more, buy more. So, I'm going to put a little Louisiana. Louisiana hot. I put a three, three or four. Four, three or four dashes. Now I'm gonna put a little Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Three dashes. That's it. Worcestershire sauce got its name back in the old west. They used to have they didn't they had it on the table and they didn't have a pay a label on there it was just a amber bottle with sauce in there and a cowboy walks in picks up the bottle and dash 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 and he takes a steak and he eats a big old bite and he goes oh my god what's this here sauce what's this here sauce uh, yay okay <laughs> All right, I'm not a me. I'm not a. I'm not a uh, comedian. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn. Seasonings into that and let them. Now the seasonings are really starting to marry together. Oh gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh lord. Something is. Something is smelling good now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the last little bit of green onions in there, and that that's just gonna make color. So that's just gonna make color. Okay, got some green in there. Green, red, yellow, orange. Yummy, yummy. What you gonna do here? Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Oh my gosh. Very good. Very good. But let me tell you something. Now, it's not over with. You've got to you put that down on the low setting. And this is going to saute. This is going to simmer. This is going to simmer. And it's the, the flavors are just going to get better and better and better and better. Now I got to put some, uh, I got to put some, some rice on. And then it's, it's got to be there. Okay. All right, we, uh, keep our rice in the freezer. I'm going to go ahead and put one cup. Two cups. Alright. I had to wash it a little bit. I didn't like it. It's still kind of starchy, but it's okay. The rice is almost three. It said the water's three cups. So I'm going to go ahead and pour. I'm going to go ahead and use the. Uh, olive oil. I'm going to put a little pour. That's it. Not much. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. Not much. What salt does is it raises the temperature of the water a little bit hotter for the rice to cook in the rice cooker so I'm gonna go ahead and boom, put it on and it's good to go rice will be ready soon all right everything's about done bye bye so after letting it simmer for a while I'm gonna, it's been it's kind of sticky on the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of see how it has that 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 oh. it, it has like Get that film over the top of it. Right there. Right there. Damn. See? So, and it's kind of sticky in the bottom. So. All right, it's done. It is done. That is crochet to fake. Now I need to get the bread ready because you gotta eat some bread with that. And the rice is nice and perfectly done. Mm. Basmati rice. Yummy. Fluff the white, the rice. The basmati rice. <laughs> Told you it's thicken up. Look at that, nice and thick. My wife ain't shy. Look at her bowl. It's my bowl. <laughs> anyway.
we're gonna sit down and eat and it's already good because we already tasted it that's some good stuff right there So it looks pretty good. Crawfish etouffee. Can tell you my wife ain't bashful about getting her full serving. And we'll probably eat that and maybe enjoy another second serving a little bit later because we got plenty of left. Alright, thanks for watching y'all.